Mobility Cost of Living Payments are going to be made now from the 20th of September uh, to, to various people. Who gets to qualify for that and how will they be paid? Morning. Good morning, Tom, and thanks very much for having me on. I'm really pleased to be able to be with you talking about this because I hope it's of reassurance to people to know that these payments will be going out, as you say, from the 20th of September. And for those who qualify, they'll be paid automatically, so people don't need to take any action to get them. And in this case, it's the people who uh, are already receiving uh, disability uh, benefits, and, and by that I mean personal independence payment, uh, attendance allowance, and also a few others. So there's all the detail on gov.uk, which I'd urge people to to check. And what I want to say as well is that this is in addition to the £1,200 that is already uh, underway going out to the 8 million most vulnerable households. And that portion of the support, of course, covers those on means-tested benefits. And there the examples would be uh, universal credit or employment Mm -hmm. and support allowance. And again, more detail on the gov.uk website. But the message today is that this is happening, the support is going out. uh, And if you're eligible, then you'll be getting those payments automatically. You will have seen that the forecast is for the energy price cap to rise to potentially five grand a year on average in April. 150 quid for people on disability benefits is welcome, but do you accept that there's going to have to be more support? Well, I think, first of all, I want to really emphasise that, it, that the, this £150 that we're talking about today comes on top of, uh, for, for many people, that uh, £1,200. So it really should be taken in that bigger context. And I think that overall package uh, is comprehensive and I hope, uh, as you say, will be welcome. Uh, of course, that includes uh, actually £400 for every household uh, on energy bills. But you also make the, the perfectly right point that actually we are hearing a lot of worrying news, aren't we, about inflation or about energy prices prices and a range of things that are, that I know are of uh, you know are, are of a great deal of of worry to people so that's why the government is acting but i think there's also a point to make but, about sorry, future but acting acting how well acting with acting with uh, 1200 pounds of support which no, I've, i know that's good. I, I've that's been fine going and, and, and that's um, mm. we've mm. known about that for some time and that's uh, as i say that mm-hmm. is welcome but that was done when the price cap was was going to be lower than it's currently believed it's going to be so what is the government doing now about a price cap that could reach £5,000 a year in April? Well, I think we just need to, to draw a distinction here because, of course, the 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 current government, the, the, the government that will now be uh, outgoing, has acted and has acted to the circumstances that people are experiencing now. And I think what you may then be asking, actually, is something that would be for the uh, incoming government to think about. Uh, either well, candidate hang on, hang on, uh, to be Prime Minister sorry, but... will be considering that really carefully. And, of course, uh, news about the energy price cap as part of that. That's great. But... The business secretary in the papers at the weekend, and I think indeed the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the current Chancellor of of the Exchequer, have attempted to reassure people, us, that work is going on in government right now to help identify what is going to be needed in the coming months in order to deal with this. What work is being done to do that? Well, you're quite right to say that, and 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 they've already they've already explained that. There's there's not not but further detail I can add about that to you right now. But what I can say is that indeed that work is going on. And what's more, what work is the, that? the Sorry, new it's prime minister very well to say work is going on, but it's just, it is, just yeah. get, let's let's try and give people some reassurance, some specifics about what it what is the government actually doing right now when they hear about oh my god five thousand pounds a year uh, on average every year in April that is a nightmare. What is the government actually doing as Minister for State for as Minister of State for Disabled People? What more are you pushing for to try and build into the help that is being worked on? Yeah, Tom. What is going on right now is that the government is making payments, and that's principally what I've been wanting to talk to you today about. So, 150 pounds for disabled people on top of uh, 1,200 pounds. Now, in terms of uh, in terms of discussing things for the future. The next Prime Minister will want to look at all of this extremely closely and the work that is presently going on in government to look ahead to the challenges that come next is what will then be on the desk of that incoming Prime Minister and I think that's perfectly understandable. I can't preempt that for you right now. I can't write uh, the emergency budget that 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 Prime Minister will be wanting to deliver. I think it's been downgraded to to a fiscal event but I take the point about the new Prime Minister is going to want to do it. But if the Business Secretary has said that there is work happening and the Chancellor has said, don't worry, we're looking at this in detail for the next Prime Minister, as Minister of State for Disabled People, have you seen anything across your desk, in your in-tray, in your red box that would constitute something of the work that is being done that we're told about in order to plan for the future? 
Tom, I think you know that I can't really share those details with you. But what I can say well, I don't is know that, that actually, with respect, I don't know that you can't. Are you t- are you telling me you have seen and you and you can't, or you haven't seen, so you don't know? Tom, what I'm telling you is that the uh, the principal thing is that the government is already making payments to support people and that there will be, I know, uh, future focus on this. But I can't give you those details now because that future prime minister isn't in place yet. And it is rightly for them to have to make work those decisions told, in the light of to, data I... that will be available to them at that point. And they will, they will, I know, be as keen as you are to make sure that information then gets to uh, your listeners. Now, I'm particularly keen to see Elizabeth with Trust be the uh, next Prime Minister. And I know she has said that she would want to uh, look at uh, all of that data in the round when she uh, has it, and then to be able to create an emergency budget. Now, I want to see the interests of disabled people really well represented in there, and I'll be uh, talking to her about that. Of course I will, and of course, as Secretary of State for Equalities already, she knows this this really, really uh, intensely yeah. and, and knows how people uh, need to be able to uh, hear that reassurance. So when that moment comes, I think you will have that detail. But the key point today is to give that reassurance uh, in terms of what is already happening and already being paid. Sure. And that is uh, £150 to support disabled people from the 20th of September and as I say, on top of £1,200 that's already been going that's out. That's £37 billion. That's a lot of money. Uh, that's right that that help is given and people will you know, take it and, and uh, use it in the manner in which they, they can to help themselves. But in answer to the question of what work is being undertaken to, play, to plan for the future, as the Chancellor and the Business Secretary say, your answer is there is, but I can't tell you what. Essentially, Tom, yes. And and I think the listeners will understand that. And they will understand as well that there is, of course, a great deal of data coming in on this. There is inflation data. There is the energy price cap data. All of that has to go together onto the desk of the new prime minister. And I think that's quite reasonable, actually, that they would then be able to make that decision. Richard Walker, the boss of Iceland, was on with me just earlier. Um, He's talked about batch cooking to to cut costs on energy bills. He's talked about using microwaves to try and drive down costs. I see that um, there's talk in Germany of a speed limit on the motorway. Is that the kind of thing that the government might look at um, trying to tell people to do, advising people to do, use the microwave and drive more slowly, that kind of thing? I I don't think you'll find the government giving out tips of that kind. I think the government will be uh, looking in terms of the the, um, broader policy that would be appropriate for a a government to look at. And an example of that, uh, obviously, is is the support that has already been put in place by by this government, uh, which, as I say, I really hope will be be welcome to people and will be starting to make a difference for people. You, I'm sure, will have seen the the horrendous news that happened overnight, broke overnight from Liverpool, the, the shooting of a nine-year-old girl. Um, Dominic Raab, the Justice Secretary, is, is in the papers, front page of the Daily Mail this morning, saying justice is being held to ransom, describing the open-ended barrister's strike as holding justice to ransom and, and indicating uh, that there will be untold anguish to victims of crime and that it will make the streets less safe as offenders are allowed to roam free. Do you, f- do you feel comfortable with drawing that connection between the barristers going out on strike and rising violent crime? I think the first thing to say is actually how how shocking this incident seems to have been from Liverpool. I, I don't know all the details and I wouldn't wish to make any comment on the details. I, I, my, my thoughts are just with the family at present in what, what is clearly a, an absolutely appalling uh, incident. Um, so, so therefore, I think it's it's difficult for me to add more to what's already been said. But on the subject of the the barrister strike, I I would very much prefer to see the barristers uh, at work so that victims can get their justice as quickly as possible. Because without justice being done quickly, justice is denied, and if more people are put on bail and are out, the chances are that they'll commit more crimes if they're not put through the justice system swiftly. I think that's broadly right. And so, you know, the idea of an open-ended strike does worry me because uh, I think that's not going to help victims get uh, their justice any quicker. It's only going to hinder it. Do you think that the cuts to legal aid that have been made over the last few years of Conservative government went too far? No, I don't. And and actually, what I would also point out here is that, in fact, the government is uh, already raising um, uh, what, what will effectively be, be barri- barristers' uh, fees and income. So I, I, I don't see the basis for uh, a strike here. And what I would want, uh, whether it's for the, um, the grieving family in Liverpool or for any other victim, is for them to be able to be well served by the criminal justice system. And, and for that, I really would urge uh, barristers to, to stop their strike and, and, and come back to work. Thank you for your time.
Chloe Smith, Minister of State for Disabled People, Work and Health in the Work and Health Department, Conservative MP for Norwich North, on the news that if you are in receipt of those disability benefits, you will be able to access £150 uh, from the 20th September alongside the other help that is available to deal with those rising costs of energy as well as the rising cost of living more broadly. To that story, we will